In this tutorial we'll have a look at some basic pen and tile techniques in Nuke, which means we'll grab a bunch of still frames, like this read node here. It has a whole bunch of tiles. And um, we'll stitch them together into one big spherical environment using the 3D card node. The resulting scene we can use to create a spherical texture map, or cubic maps, or we can simply use it as a 3D background for our shot to create our uh, animated background with. If you have to assemble tile sets like that, I strongly recommend trying to find out about the camera that was used to shoot those tiles with. In particular, you want to know its aperture, or sensor size, as well as the focal length that was used to shoot those things. And if you have those two parameters, you'll save yourself a lot of hassle and guesswork in putting that together. I'll attach the View Metadata node, hoping that it'll spit out some useful information, and in fact, it does, and tells me that those JPEGs were shot with a Canon EOS 450D. So let's go ahead and find out the sensor size of that camera, because I have to do this quite often. I actually have a menu item here linking to DP Review, which is a pretty good camera database on the web. So I'll go to Canon, find 450D, there it is. And in here we'll find the sensor size, because it's a digital camera. And here it is, it's 22.2 times 14.8. So back in Nuke, I kind of like creating a uh, an equivalent camera to what was being used. So I'll just create a camera node and punch in the values 22.2 times 14.8, like so. And um, back to the metadata for a second. Let's find the focal length. I'll just type in focal. Try to at least. And that would be a key. There it is. 28 mil. So we'll punch that in. 28 millimeter. And I'll just decrease the far clipping plane to have a bit more of a compact view of this. We won't actually need the camera for our stitching but it helps to verify that you're doing the right thing. So now let's go ahead and extract the first two tiles from the sequence here. So I'll just append a frame hold node and switch this one to hold frame one and then copy that and create a frame hold at frame two. When I do this, I like toggling on the postage using Alt P like so and toggling that off, but that's just me. So now we're ready to create our first card. And you may have noticed before that the card node itself has a focal length and a horizontal aperture. It has those properties to facilitate exactly our pen and tile setup. So let's actually go ahead and uh, copy those values from the camera. I'll just shift drag the focal length from the camera into the, cam uh, into the card to copy it and then do the same for the horizontal aperture. Shift drag over into the horizontal aperture and that takes care of that. We don't need the vertical aperture because the card node figures that out based on the incoming images aspect. Once we have a focal length and a horizontal aperture assigned we can now use the Z slider to push the card out in space through the virtual camera that is defined through those parameters. So you can see that as I modify the Z in the card, it moves exactly along the camera's frustum, even though we don't need this camera really, but it visualizes exactly what the card is doing under the hood. And we're also not transforming the card's pivot by using the Z knob. So once we've done that, we can still rotate around the point of origin like so which is very helpful for pen and tile setups. So it's basically almost like the card has its own projection camera built in. So obviously we shot the image in uh, portrait format, so let's go ahead and accommodate for that by rotating around minus 90 in Z to put that upright. So that's like, like uh, rotating the camera in minus 90 degrees like so and if I move it back to one you'll see it it fits perfectly again okay so now let's actually get rid of that camera we don't need it any longer and um, 
copy that card node that we've got onto the second texture, combine the two things with a scene node and attach the viewer to that. And now the fun starts, which is you have to find the rotational values to match those two things. So you go into the Y rotation and rotate your card until it joins up with the previous one. So let's zoom in a little bit here. And I'm looking at the chimney here in the background. Just fine tune that a little bit. Maybe rotate up an X a little bit. You should really only try to use rotation with a setup like this because there is no parallax and uh, rotation should get you all the way there unless there is a lens distortion which is an entirely different issue. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and copy that over and create a third tile. Make frame 3 as a frame hold this time and once again I'll copy that over and join it up into the scene node and um, since that was minus 25 I'm just hoping I'll be lucky with minus 50. Now let's have a look how far that got us. Well actually not really close so let's fine-tune that by hand a little bit by uh, tweaking the Y rotation again. So that's probably the majority of the time that you'll be spending doing this. Okay, let's let's say we kind of like what we've got at this stage and um, we want to go ahead and render this. So we just attach a scanline render node and create a camera. This would be your, your shot camera that you would render your new 3D background through. So I'm just going to attach that and adjust it in a rather arbitrary way to just look at our tile set. So that gives us this view. Let's actually widen the view a little and rotate a bit over Y like so. And now hit tab to go into scanline render mode. And that gives us our tile set. So let's zoom into the seams and just deactivate the node. That's where the seam is. That's actually pretty good. So you can you can still see, especially if you gamma down, that there are still a few seams here. And here, a quick fix for that without major pain would be to use the Z-Blend mode in the Scanline Render node. So if you set that to, let's say, linear, that's way too much. Um, I have to decrease the Z-Blend range. The Z-Blend range is in actual world units and keep in mind that we've only created this setup at one unit away from the origin so we need to make this pretty small. The Z-Blend range essentially creates a little volumetric cube around each pixel and allows cards to be pulled through into a blending that are actually occluded by the foreground so that blends foreground and background cards together and you can see the difference between no blend and linear blend, it nicely gets rid of some of the problem areas for us without much of a hassle really. So that's your basic um, pen and tile setup.